What's up everybody, back with another raid guide and today we're taking a look at Keltuzad on Mythic Difficulty. I'll be going over most of the mechanics, how to deal with them and our overall tactic for this fight. Now don't forget to check out my Twitch, there's progress raids on Mondays and Tuesdays. So good old Keltuzad. Setup wise, just 2 tanks, 4 healers and 14 DPS and you want interrupts, lots and lots of interrupts. Now with that said, what's new for KT on Mythic? Well for starters, KT now starts with 2 stacks of Necrotic Surge which increases the amount of players targeted by Oblivion's Echo and Glacial Wrath, which means you start with 4 of each and it increases by 1 per intermission. In the same style, he also increased the amount of tank adds that spawns following a Soul Fracture, so you now get 5 of them them to nuke down and pick up instead of three. And during the intermission inside the Flactory, Shadowy Fissures now leave small pools on the ground. And the Remnant will also use Foul Winds, which is just a pushback trying to push players off the platform. There's also adds during the final burn, there's two Soul Reavers and an Abomination, so enjoy. All in all, nothing major mechanically, but these changes alone means you play the fight a bit differently. Now with that said, Let's go through phase 1. Cue the picture! First thing to go through are the marks. The most important marks are Cross, Star and Skull. The rest we mostly used as reference points throughout the fight to maybe call something. Cross and Star are drop off points for spikes and meteors in phase 1s. Skull is where you place all Oblivion Echoes throughout all phase 1s. Now you want to have an interrupt and kill order for the tank adds that you get during phase 1s, as they need to die as soon as possible and if if a cast goes off it can easily lead to a couple of players dying. So we had 2 to 3 DPS assigned to each add and at least 2 interrupts per add. So players assigned to an add was in charge of both keeping it interrupted and to make sure it died. We assigned each add with a number and then players to each numbers. Looking at our marks, add number 1 was always the closest to the green mark, then second, then third, etc etc. Now keep in mind that you can stun these adds, you can solar beam them which kind of keeps them interrupted until they die, anything to make sure they do not get casts off. And then every meteor should be placed on the star mark and you should have both tanks soaking it and then either 2-3 to three tanky players like boomkins or you can run 2 immunities in the soaks as well like mages, hunters, whatever. We use 2 tanks plus 3 druids to soak all meteors as druids can shapeshift the route and survive well pretty much anything. And then we assign freedoms for both tanks to get rid of all the roots instantly. Mass Dispel and regular dispels works as well, of course. Now, for the strat we use, there's a lot of AFKing and some specific cooldown timings to make sure you have everything ready for each set of glacial spikes, which is one per phase one. That is one set of glacial spikes. So, before I break down each phase, I just want to go over the glacial spike positions and cooldown timings. So, the whole idea is to have all healing cooldowns and defensives ready for when the glacial spikes goes off during phase ones. I mean literally the entire spell book, you just stack cooldowns. So the first set you get, which is first phase 1, will have 4 spikes and you drop these on top of the boss and cleave them down as fast as possible. And healers want to pop their cooldowns a few seconds before the spikes goes off, so they line up for the next set. The scary part is when the spikes goes off more so than the actual dot you get from it. So even if you were to lose spirit link or barrier for the last 2-3 ticks of the dot, it's fine. Now for the second set of glacial spikes, which is during the second phase 1, you want to put all 5 of them around the star marker. And you want to very, very, very gently get some DPS on it. We told our boomkins you could starfall them and no one else touches them. Now if you don't have 2 or 3 boomkins that can just blanket starfall on them a bit, the kill timing for these spikes is after tank adds a meteor as soon as healers have cooldowns ready. That's what you want to time it for. So the amount of DPS you do to them should be dictated by that. After Meteor, whenever healers have their cooldowns ready. That's the correct time. And for the final set of spikes, which is in the third phase one, you get six spikes. Now this one is a bit different, you want to put one of them on top of boss and the other five way back on the red cross marker. And these you let time out by themselves. The one on the boss you instantly kill, but the five in the back, no one DPS them at all, not a single dot. You want them to last their full duration to assure you have everything, all healing cooldowns back in time. And I will cover this bit a bit during the break 
breakdown as well, but I mostly put it here if you need to jump back into the video and you have a clear section for glacial spikes. So let's break down the fight now. So on pull, we drag KT back a bit and everyone stacks up behind. As soon as Soul Fracture goes out, everyone goes to their assigned add, interrupt and kill it. Again, you will have to AFK for a very long time, so don't minimax uptime on boss tank add spawn, go deal with him. Players that get targeted by Oblivion's Echo goes to the skull mark in the back and stacks them before dealing with tank adds. After the tank adds are dead, stack on boss, make sure the frostbound adds that spawn from skull mark are slowed, stunned, vortex, you name it. They just can't reach the boss or the group. And then you want to start burning them down. When you get your first glacial spike, put all four on top of boss, AWM down, healers pop raid cooldowns a few seconds before spikes dies, and the player that gets meteor runs to star mark, both tanks plus assigned soakers moves in to soak it. And deal with the second and third set of tank adds just like before and then stop DPS when boss is around 15%. And for us this was around the second set of tank adds that we reached around 15%. So after that you want to just AFK or kill interrupt tank adds then AFK. And then you push into phase 2 around the 205 mark. So in practice this means waiting through the entire howling blast and then about an additional 10 seconds ish before you push. If you wait a bit too long the boss can spawn the fourth set of tank adds but as long as you push around the 205 mark you'll be fine. So like I said there's a lot of AFKing. Just hit that 15% threshold, hold DPS, after howling blast do a countdown and try and kill it in about 10 seconds after the howling blast. So let's take a look at the intermission instead. So first of all let's talk about how to split the raid here. The things you need to keep in mind as you're setting this up is having enough DPS inside to kill the remnant in time and having enough interrupts outside to keep reavers or I'm gonna call them banshees from casting. There are three banshees outside that needs to be interrupted and if your setup allows it assign three to four interrupts per banshee. You can get away with three interrupts if it's on a 15 seconds cooldown but if you throw something like a mage into the mix you're probably gonna need a fourth interrupt. So three to four interrupts per banshee and make sure they never start channeling. Always interrupt before they start channeling which is at the end of the cast. As for the inside the phylactery we had one healer, a holy paladin, three boomkins, an outlaw rogue and a fire mage as well as a havoc demon hunter that just went in, debuffed remnant and then left. And their whole job down here is just to blow up the remnant so they need to have all cooldowns everything ready to just blast who to send in is really about how few can you send down and still push remnant in time so i sadly cannot give you this setup will work as it will differ between raid teams so you probably have some trial and error here to go but generally you want classes or specs with bursty cooldowns that don't lose too much for movement like boomkins fire mages sub or outlaw rogues warriors I've seen a lot of guilds actually use chatter priests just to name a few but like i said it's mostly a trial and error kind of thing we sent down five dps and a healer but you can easily send down six or even seven dps as long as you have enough interrupts outside damage will always be fine outside interrupts however may not be so when the intermission starts phylactery people get inside and start nuking remnant we marked one of our players and had everyone inside the phylactery stack and follow him to get all of the shadow fissures, puddles controlled and to bait the frosty frontal so it's easier to dodge. Stack move as a group. Everyone outside needs to stack up on Skullmark to avoid getting one shot by Abomination's initial aggro. And here's where the fun starts. You want this phase to last as long as possible, meaning you want Remnant to die or be pushed when there's like 3 to 4 seconds left before Vengeful Destruction goes off. But you can't kill any of the adds outside earlier than within 10 seconds of the Destruction cast. And ideally you want all adds to be dead before Remnant gets pushed or your tank and random players will start Start dropping fast. So the rule we followed was get all the adds low and when there's like 15 seconds left on the destruction timer call to kill adds outside and then finish off remnant when there's just a few seconds left on destruction. Doing it this way will make it a bit more controlled and you should never have adds resting and less chance of adds being up when intermission ends. Now if this happens tanks need to get far away or pop a lot of cooldowns and raid should hard focus down any adds that are up at this point. Now I 
cannot stress how delicate this timing is. The ads have virtually no HP at all, so if you just go ham on them, they'll die. We had players mostly cleave off the abominations, and we pulled both of them to each banshee one by one, so they could cleave down somewhat evenly. Like the first banshee, 70%, to the next one, 70%, to the next one, etc, etc. It just needs to be very controlled. Everything boils down to those last 10 seconds. Ads needs to die, then within 10 seconds from that, remnants needs to get pushed, and roughly around 3-4 seconds before the destruction goes off. So like I said, a ton going on in the last 10 seconds. Once remnant is pushed to you 60%, phase 1 begins again, and from here on it is rinse repeat apart from the glacial spikes as I explained earlier. But yeah, second phase 1, all spikes to star mark, star fall and down so they die a bit after the tank adds in the meteor, and you want to push boss to intermission around the 452 mark, just before the fourth tank adds spawn from soul fracture. So again, there'll be a lot of AFKing here as well, just focus on a lot of mechanics like killing adds, making sure frostbound and devoted die, interrupts, etc. Then deal with the second intermission the exact same way, but players inside the phylactery use combat pot here. And for the third phase one, only one thing that differs is the glacial spikes. This time one of them on top of boss, rest should be all the way back on cross to make sure they don't accidentally get padded on by someone and just let him tick out by himself. On our kill we almost got this timing wrong because we nuked down Remnant too fast during second intermission, so we just barely, barely get cooldowns back to survive it, and it just goes to show how much push timings matters, so don't push too fast. And for your last intermission, outside players deal with it the same way, but inside players should now hold all DPS cooldown, so they have them ready for the final burn. Remnant has half as much HP for this push, so you shouldn't need any cooldowns there unless some someone dies inside. If that happens, cool down away. At least one of you. The only timing you want here is to kill adds before remnants. You start last phase without adds and hopefully everyone alive. And for phase 3, everyone stack up on boss, bloodlust, combat pod, all cooldowns. We sacrificed every player targeted by meteor in this phase. If they could immune, they did, otherwise just went away from raid and died. When the adds spawn, make sure to keep both the banshees interrupted at all time and pull Keltazad on top of one of the banshees so it can be cleaved down. Down and melee can help keep it interrupted while you're cleaving. Range focus on interrupting the other banshee, all DPS should still be on KT at all time here. Don't waste damage on adds, don't pad on the abomination, just tunnel boss and potentially cleave one banshee. And it's just a race against the clock after this kill boss before you run out of room or boss kills you. Well that's pretty much it, biggest pain points for us during progression was just figuring out when to push boss, how to get healing cooldowns to line up for all the spikes. But that's covered in the videos so hopefully that makes it easier for you guys. Next pain point was for sure intermission timings, getting the adds to die a bit before remnants so tanks don't get slapped in the face or random DPS died. DPS really really needs to be on their best behavior and practice that control DPS. And yeah, have fun AFKing! If you have any questions at all about this encounter, hit me up in the comments or become a patron or twitch sub and get access to the stanky discord where you can find raid week or as healing notes or help with anything raiding related. Don't forget the usual stuff like comment, subscribe and ring that notification bell. It really helps me out. I'm also streaming all of our progression on Twitch so do make sure to check that out, it's on Mondays and Tuesdays. Come keep me company! Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.